How long before he mixes in that sort of company then, do you reckon? Well, we don't even know whether he's going to be a lightweight or light welterweight, but I think he should be talking about, you know, two and a half, three years before he gets up to the top. Those guys might not be there. We're talking about Mayweather being around for a long time. He's a phenomenal fighter, but the other guys could be gone by then. You, you see him moving up there. He's sliding up a bit above that 9-9 lightweight limit towards the 10 stone at Welter. Yeah, he's finished his amateur career at, at, in, in the 10 stone division. You know, he's 18 years old, the general consensus is that he's putting weight on, so chances are he's going to be a light well to him. He's observed Ramadan, which means yes. he can't eat or drink in daylight hours. How will that affect him as a boxer? Well, it's, there's many Muslim fighters who cope with that and deal with it. It's not ideal circumstances, but I'm sure he'll cope. Barry, you picked out a little fault that we'd have to watch out for Amir, holding his hands worryingly low from your point of view. Yes, I'm, I'm concerned about that. He's of extremely talented, precocious talent as an amateur going right to the very top in the amateur game and I feel that he can do the same as the, in the professional game but he's got to get those hands up because the rounds are longer, there's no head guard, the gloves are smaller, there's more infighting, there's just so many reasons why he should be getting them up and he doesn't need to take punches unless he has to, he's a phenomenal talent, he's just got to make sure to stay clear of the infighting. A word from you about his opponent tonight, uh, Steve Gethin, the Midlander. Well, Steve Gethin is an experienced guy, he's been around a long time, you know, he's only 28 years old, but he really is only a super Small. featherweight. Featherweight, super featherweight, this is a division above what he's normally fighting at. I think Amir can get rid of him reasonably quickly. Cheers, Barry. Thank you very much indeed. That is Barry's view. Let us hear what Amir Khan himself uh, thinks. He's been talking down in the dressing room to Gabriel Clark. Yes, Amir's here after England and Wales. Scotland next to conquer. What are you going to make it tonight? I'm going to put a good performance up and just see what happens. I'm um, going to go in there. I'm going to box the lad and if the knockout comes, it comes. Just go with the flow. Everyone's expecting you to finish this one early, very early. Is that, is that your intention tonight? Not really, no. I'm just going to go in there, like I said. I'm just going to box him and if I know that I can knock him out, I'm going to do that. What about the atmosphere? What are you expecting? Hopefully expecting a big crowd. Uh, a lot of people from Bolton have travelled up. So it's going to be good um, seeing all them guys and Scottish fans as well. Hopefully there's loads of them going to be supporting me. And what about what you're aiming for in terms of just progression? I'm just going to be aiming for going in there, enjoying it and just soaking the atmosphere up. What's your coach, Oliver Harrison, stressed to you? He said, keep your hands up, keep moving and box the guy. Are you fit enough? Are you strong enough to finish this fight early? Definitely. As everyone expects? Yeah, very strong, very fit and I feel sharp as well, yeah. Good luck with it. Thanks very much. Amir Khan's been putting a kilt on up here in Scotland and... Uh, 6,000 or so people around here chanting, there's only one Andrew Murray. They've seen you, they recognise you, they like you. Yeah, it's actually the first day I've been home um, this year, so it's pretty cool. I've got a good reception here and I'm um, just looking forward to watching Amir now. What comparisons can you draw between yourself and Amir Khan? You've both had pretty spectacular years, haven't you? Yeah, we're obviously both pretty young. Um, we're up-and-comers in, in our sports, but he's won a silver medal in the Olympics and he's achieved so much. But um, you, you can draw some comparisons in our sport because it's it's one on one, but I'm, luckily I'm not getting punched in the head. You're not getting punched when you went one on one with Tim Henman though recently. You beat him, and that was a an emotional victory for you, wasn't it? You shed a tear after that one. Yeah, that's uh, the biggest win of my life, and playing against Tim uh, is a great honour. He's someone that I look up to, and I've respected for the well the whole of my life pretty much, and he inspired me to play tennis. So to win against him was was very special. They like you here. It's great to have you here at ringside, and you've got a big career in front of you as well. Thanks for joining us. Andrew. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank yeah. you very much indeed. Okay then. So now we know what Amir Khan can do, can't we? David uh, Bailey in that first butt fight, crash, bang, wallop. What a debut! And now Amir Khan prepares to do more of the same when you rejoin us. Believe me, Glasgow's Brayhead Arena is absolutely jumping. We are here for the local boy, Scott Harrison, defending his WBO featherweight title against Nadal Hussein. Hussein. That one is coming later. Now it is Amir Khan time. What a career so far. A quick stoppage and then Amir going the full distance, the full four rounds against Coventry's Baz Carey in his second fight. Well, Gethin is mixed in quite decent company, but he is essentially a featherweight. A big job on his hands tonight for the Midlander. Your commentators will be Duke McKenzie and John Rawling. 
And as the atmosphere builds, let's join your MC, Michael Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. And welcome to the magnificent Greyhead Arena here in the city of Glasgow, Scotland. Please welcome, making his way to the ring from Walsall, Steve Gethin. Steve Gethin, the 27-year-old, providing the third professional opponent for Amir Khan. In his 29th professional fight, he wouldn't pretend to be anything more than a journeyman, but it's his big opportunity, and he has a chance to, well, he has a chance to cause a huge upset, make no doubt about it. If he were to win this one, Obviously, the odds stacked against him, but he'll want to fight with pride, and he's brought his own supporters all the way up from Walsall tonight to encourage him along the way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his entrance to the ring from Bolton. Terrific reception from the Brayhead Arena. More than 6,000 fans crammed in here tonight. Amir Khan giving a hero's reception. And what we know and what they don't know is that Amir Khan is now Uncle Amir. Just a matter of minutes ago, his older sister Tabinda gave birth to a baby daughter. Shah, his father, now a granddad. And Amir, I wonder if he knows that. I'm sure he does. Here he is then, coming along for the third professional fight. David Bailey blown away in just 109 seconds, past Carey. He took him the distance in Cardiff back in September. But Amir Khan handles all this attention so well. He had maturity beyond his years back in the amateur ranks. And here as the professional, he enters the ring. And as an emerging young professional and something of a national icon, a sporting icon, he is very much to the manner born. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening once more and welcome to the Brayhead Arena here in the city of Glasgow, Scotland. Tonight, Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with the news of the world, big on boxing and on the internet with www.frankwan.tv proudly presents four three-minute rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Welcome to you, the viewers watching live and exclusive on ITV4. The officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, stood in charge is Mr. Charles Giles. Timekeeper at the belt, Mr. Ricky Gilmore. Finally, when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action, Mr. Victor Lachlan from Paisley. And now, introducing the boxers themselves. Firstly, fighting out of the red corner wearing the blue colored shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled nine stones, 11 pounds. He's tonight taking part in his 30th professional contest, presenting from Walsall, Steve Gethin. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the silver spangled shorts trimmed with tartan. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled nine stones, 11 and a half pounds. From two contests, he has two wins. One of those wins coming by way of knockout as an amateur. He was the 2004 Athens Olympic silver medalist presenting from Bolton the undefeated Amir Khan. Referee Mr. Victor Lachlan with his final instructions. 
for three minute rounds. Well, what a phenomenal reception there for Amir Khan. Can. Down here, boys. Okay, guys, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. Remember, be my commands at all time and defend yourselves at all time. Best of luck to you both. God bless. Let's do it. Four three-minute rounds, and Duke, I have to say that during those introductions, I thought Steve Gethin looked really nervous, very nervous indeed. He certainly does, he looks very pensive. You know, this is a massive opportunity for him. It's whether or not he can actually hold his nerve and take the fight to Khan, but, you know, he's fighting a young, um, up-and-coming star. Well, what's it going to be tonight? Don't hold your breath, here we go. Khan versus Gethin. Gethin's been training seven weeks specifically for this one. <laughs> And he says that Khan has got speed, agility and power, but somehow he's got to try and box his way in close, try and work away towards the body and try and make a real contest of it. Khan with the blurring hand speed seems to have markedly filled out since he's been training in a professional gym with Oliver Harrison and he's, as ever, started really quickly. Getting in there, throwing flurries of punches, lovely uppercut there. And once more, after throwing those hurtful punches, back up range and making Gethin punch into thin air. Well, Gethin's too upright, you know, when Khan unloads with the combinations, he's going to catch him because he's just right there in front of him to be hit. Gethin has got nine professional victories. He's been a pro since 1999, works full-time for GKN makes drive shafts for a living but here he is getting his highest ever payday reputed to be around about 5,000 quid and is he going to be able to push the young star is he going to be able to bring things out of Amir Khan that we've not seen before Gethin trying to duck low trying to get inside that long reach of Khan and trying to work to the body a bit better from Khan, just trying to pick the jab, you know, he's not really showing too much restraint at the moment. Just throwing punches in the general direction where he hopes they'll land. And he's just certainly self down, he's obviously really fired up, wants to put on a good performance for the crowd, is Khan. A couple of good left hands from Khan and a really good hurtful shot to the body. Showing good variety of punch and already Kethin looking as though he's being outclassed and getting into anxious territory. Oh, terrific left hook into the body from Khan, and nothing coming back from Gethin. Hurtful right into the side of the head as well, and Gethin can do, do no more than try and hold on and buy just a little bit of time. Is he going to see it way, his way through to the end of the first round, I wonder? Well, already it looks like Gethin's just a punch bag. He's not in the same class as this boy. Not at all. Well, Gethin bravely tried to throw a right hand of his own after that flurry of punches from Khan. But there is just too much in the armoury of the Olympic silver medalist. The left hook come up a cut to the body behind the elbow. That should be the shot that sinks this boy to his, to his haunches from Khan. It's a world time shot. Well, Gethin, I think he's going to see it through to the bell. Good opening from Khan one-way traffic he's bossed it and won the opening round emphatically get it all back to me. get it all back really confident opening from Amir Khan and he was letting the punches flow with tremendously impressive speed and I have to say as well precision Duke well you know he can afford to throw caution to the wing and just do pretty much what he wants to do you know I don't think Gethin, Gethin's got the firepower to hurt Khan. I mean, it would be absolutely a, a massive scalp for him if he could pull it off, but this far hasn't shown us anything whatsoever. It's a four-round fight. Khan can do this at a sprint. Gethin's cornerman was saying, roll away from the punches, try and cover, create some, create some openings of your own, but it's easier, more easily said than done. And at this stage, well, it's the learning curve, of course. Khan looking very impressive but Gethin is not remotely in his class. Terrific right hook into the body. And you can see the acclaim from the far side of the ring. Is this young man a world champion in the making, I wonder? The next couple of years are gonna tell. At the moment, he is bang in charge of this fight. The gloves are held low, 
That's something which some critics, I know Barry McGuigan has said that, he'd like to see Khan keep those gloves up higher because it does create an opening and encouragement to the opponent. It certainly does. I mean, it's much too early to be talking about Emma Khan as, uh, as a world champion or even a future world champion. The boy's still learning his trade, and let's not forget that. But, you know, these kind of fights are just devised to one thing and one thing only is to help his confidence. Boost his confidence, and when he steps up to that next level, the six-round level, then we should start seeing him get a little bit more of a test. Khan just looking to try and pick his way into the opening. I'm sure he's his corner would like to see his box his way in that's a lovely fast uppercut inside he is so quick and Geffen can do no more than cover up flurries of punches and you can see the people standing up at ringside urging him in there's uh, Shah his father just a couple of seats along from Frank Warren by the side of the ring standing up in the grey sweater and Geffen at last just manages to catch him with a sneak little right hand no great power in the shot and Khan just shrugged it off this week Duke he was saying he's realistic about what, he, what he's doing here he said it, until he's really hit in the face and hurt until he has to dig deep and fight back that's the moment that he will know himself and he'll have shown to other people that he's truly got what it takes well it is early days you know as I said before he's a work in progress he's trying to build himself up he needs to try and get you know obviously some good rounds underneath his belt this is just an exercise now it's like being in the gym and just punching the bag because he can step off and do exactly what he wants he can fight this fight at pace at distance in close he can do pretty much what he wants so you know he's not going to learn too much other than if it goes the distance then he's done another four rounds and he's got that under his belt here comes Khan again fast jab and good body shots how hurtful are they I don't know but Khan's won that round again Clint Geffen getting attention in that corner, the left eye bruising, marking up, and no surprise because Khan's just been raining punches in Duke. He certainly has. I mean, if Khan's looking for the knockout, uh, right now he's actually going about it the wrong way, he's throwing too many punches. He's to sell, he's set his feet down, throw sing single shots, and just look to pinpoint accurate shots. Well, Harrison in his corner between rounds. He was trying to urge his man to stay calm, just to try and box his way in. But there's a tendency to get carried away with the frenetic atmosphere. He really got the electric sort of response from the crowd, did Khan. That's a good shot. Khan's already won over this, this audience. He really has, you know, he's got, he's got the Scottish Titan down the side of his shorts, you know. They're on his side, and they've turned out in force tonight to see this boy perform. Khan just trying to pick his shots now and work as well. Good uppercut in there. And it's all over. It's all over. Referee Victor Lachlan said enough. And Amir Khan in the third round has made it three out of three. The few people in the crowd would have liked to have seen it go a little bit longer. And Gethin, well, I think he also said I wasn't really hurt, but Khan was hitting him pretty much at will and that is three out of three and he moves on to the next test here's how the end came well you know as i said before Khan just threw caution to the wind he doesn't have to be careful he just rain punches on this boy until the referee stepped in it's a good stoppage nobody wants to see getting take unnecessary punishment he just did what he wanted Khan and just unloaded three or four shots to the head there he was knocking his head around like a, a rag doll in those closing stages working away to the body it creates the opening and here it comes one two three four misses five goes through and six well I think Duke's absolutely right there I think that's a good stoppage it's absolutely pinpoint time by the referee you wouldn't want to see getting take unnecessary punishment he took him up and the referee stopped it Amir Khan getting congratulations and being photographed for the pictures which will surely adorn the Sunday newspapers and indeed the Monday newspapers as he moves onwards and upwards. There's his dad Shah, 
and that is a very happy picture indeed. Amir Khan's an absolute natural, the way he's been conducting himself with the public this week has been admirable. He really has fought extremely well, he's conducted himself well in public, he's done the media job terrifically well as well, and Frank Warren, his promoter, will be absolutely delighted with the progress of the young protégé to date. Ladies and gentlemen, after 49 seconds of round number three, referee Victor Lachlan has called a halt to the contest. In his opinion, Steve Geffen was in no position to continue. Your winner, he's now undefeated in three professional contests. The pride of Bolton and Great Britain, Amir Khan. All around the arena, they stand and they applaud. Your appreciation, applaud. please, for one of boxing's true warriors, Steve Gethin. Steve Gethin, not badly hurt. Amir Khan will be in the ring again on December the 10th in London. And the fireworks on bonfire night have been emphatically delivered. Thank you, John. Absolutely no arguments about uh, that stoppage from this corner. We will be talking to Amir Khan when you rejoin us. And don't forget... Still to come, Harrison against Hussein for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. And by the way, we are expecting a real war. You're back with us at the Brayhead Arena in Glasgow and Amir McCann is uh, with me here. Uh, Amir, your reaction to your third win? Oh, I think it was a brilliant fight, and especially seeing the support in Scotland, it's like boxing at home. Uh, so I want to thank everyone in Scotland and in this arena. Uh, but yeah, it was a good performance, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my performance. I'm going to go back and watch the video and see what I can learn of it and stuff. You, you do tend to be a pretty fierce critic of yourself. Was there anything you feel you could have done better? Could you have got rid of him a bit sooner perhaps? I've not really seen the video yet. Uh, but <laughs> no, we haven't played to you yet, no. Yeah. But um, I think, yeah, there, there is. I'm not, I'm not 100% yet. Um, but yeah, there, there is a lot of room of improvement yet, so I'm just going to take my time and take it all step by time yet. It was, a, it was a good finish, one or two of the crowds wanted to see a bit more of you I think, but when you look at the way you finished it down here, did you feel your opponent had enough? Um, yeah, I was hitting him with some shots and he was taking them strong, and um, he, he was strong, he kept coming forward every time I hit him hard, so that just shows that he's a great fighter and um, I'm just happy to be in the same wing as him and uh, just finish it in three rounds. You're learning your trade. You are essentially an apprentice. Uh, are you getting slightly impatient? Not impatient. I'm, I'm learning everything. Every time I'm learning every fight. And I'm just getting that step closer to a world title every time. Um, but yeah, I'm sure fights are going to get harder and harder and I'll be learning a lot more. You're fighting on December the 10th on the big heavyweight bill, aren't you? And you've got a birthday before then. Yeah, it's my birthday on the 8th of December, so I'll be 19 for that fight. Yep. <laughs> And, uh, and I mean, you're knocking on now, you're getting a bit, oh, you're an uncle, aren't you? Oh, hi, today I heard that my sister gave a birth to a baby girl, innit? Baby girl. Yeah, baby girl, so I'm an uncle now, it's getting older, I don't know. <laughs> and you should be out enjoying yourself, because this is your Christmas, isn't it, really, in the, in the, in, as, a, as a Muslim? E Mu Barak. Oh, thanks very much, and I want to say Eid to Eid Mubarak to everyone back at home and everyone. But yeah, it is my Christmas, but um, I think this is the best way to celebrate it, having a win. That means happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you anyway. Enjoy yourself. We look forward to seeing you on the 10th. Definitely. Thanks very much. Well